This right here is the smallest and cheapest Bluetooth speaker kit on Amazon. It is a STEM kit. It's designed to get kids interested in things like science and technology. But is it any good? Let's put it together and find out. So we're going to crack this open. We're going to see what's inside it. And we're going to see how to put it together. What you really want to know is how easy is this going to be for a kid. Inside the box, you've got a battery set. Battery is not included. You've got an amplifier board, some screws, a switch, and some plugs. You got the actual enclosure. It's a laser cut enclosure that's supposed to snap together. We'll see how well it snaps together. And of course you have two very small speakers that are really nothing special. But then again, this is a $20 kit. Each speaker has a connector. So there's no soldering and it looks like it's gonna be mostly toolless. As far as I can tell, you're probably just gonna need a screwdriver. This is the kind of thing that for a really small child, you're gonna to need to help them out a little bit because it's gonna be hard for a small child to have the dexterity to handle the screws. It depends on the age of the child and how often they use tools. I like the silver cone. It's just a paper cone that's been painted. Just a little tiny four ohm, three watt little driver. Nothing special about it. The first step is to install the amplifier board. So let's find the amplifier board board and let's find the right piece. And there's four screws here. So I'm guessing the amplifier board will screw into those four screws. Just following the instructions as close as possible. If you're going to do this with kids, you want to encourage them to follow the instructions. The amplifier goes to the left side. These two plugs, the speaker plugs go towards the bottom and power plug here. Pay very close attention to the amplifier location. It's going to screw down to the inside bottom of the enclosure. And what you need to do is look at the tabs and the holes and make sure they line up. It's probably a good idea to do a dry fit before you start screwing and things together. I installed it wrong on the first pass through and I had to fix it. More on that later in the video. Go ahead and plug in the power wire. Black is negative and red is positive. Snap that in. The battery pack is going to screw onto the back of the enclosure. You're looking for a piece with a small rectangular hole for the wires and a pair of screw holes lined up vertically to mount the battery pack. The top's gonna look similar to the back because it's got a hole for the power switch. You'll know you have the right one because you have to pop the back out of the waste material left behind after the laser cutting. From there, it's just a matter of screwing the battery pack down and make sure you use the shorter screws, the four millimeters, then tuck the wires through the square hole. For the speakers, just grab the baffle. That's the part with two round holes. The speakers screw in from the back. Once again, you're gonna use the shorter screws, the four millimeter screws. So there's a little lip right here, right? and that lip will drop into the speaker cutout. So you don't have to worry about bumping into the surround or the speaker cone. So it's kind of hard to mess this part up. Then you want to pop the sides out and snap them into place. The instructions are very clear that these have to go a certain way. And it looks like this. Oh yeah, that snaps in together quite nicely. From there, you can grab the back with a battery pack and snap it on. There it goes. Okay, that step was a bit of a pain and I was really worried I was gonna break it, but I didn't and it's fine. Grab the bottom. This is the piece from the very first step when you install the amplifier board. Go ahead and plug in the speakers. If you haven't installed the pigtail that goes into the amplifier yet, make sure you install that now. Then you can plug the negative wire from the battery pack to the negative wire on that pigtail. Those are the black wires, black is negative. This is the point where I figured out that I'd made a mistake way back in the very first step. So I had to take the amp board off and fix that, which might actually you have been a good thing. This is a beginner kit designed for a kid to either build on their own or build with your help. 
Making mistakes and then fixing the mistakes builds resilience, and that's something you definitely want your kids to develop. So don't look at the mistakes like mistakes. Look at them like opportunities. Here is the correct orientation. The bottom has three holes that need to line up with the three tabs on the back. One, two, three holes right here, and there's three tabs up here. One, two, three, and over here there's a small tab and a small tab right here. They have to go together or else it doesn't work. Now you can snap the bottom onto the rest of the enclosure before moving on to the top and the power switch. All right. The switch goes in, it just snaps into place. There we go. That switch has two red wires. One connects to the red pigtail from the amp board and the other to the red pigtail from the battery. We got a male end here and a female end here which is a good opportunity to teach your kids the difference between males and females. So male into female, male into female, like literally you can't do it wrong. And again, one, two, three, one, two, three. And give it a little snap. There we go, right? That's pretty much the assembly process. The only thing left to do is kind of the boring part of putting in all the screws. It'll Now, one thing about this, because the screws are just going into a dead space, it's really easy to strip them. So you don't need to put a lot of torque on these things. Batteries aren't included, so you'll need to go scrounge for four AA batteries, install those and connect to the Bluetooth to see how it sounds. Looks like it's showing up as Z Horse Bluetooth speaker. There it goes. Very happy little sound. stopped. Why did it stop? It stopped again. There seems to be a problem. It just kind of stops randomly. It could be a loose connection or an issue with the wireless connection to the Bluetooth. I think it's an issue with the Bluetooth lagging because I didn't get any Bluetooth or connection tones before the music started playing again. And in the footage I just showed you, it stopped while I was handling it. It did that at least one time when it was just sitting on the workbench, but then it didn't give me any more problems. Let's see if we can get a shot with these little speakers flexing. Sound quality wise, it's okay for what it is. This is not a hi-fi speaker kit. It plays music just fine. It doesn't sound any worse than other small speakers. And obviously it's not gonna have any low end extension, but that's not why you buy something like this. You buy something like this to spend quality time with your kids. How much quality time? Well, the assembly process took me about an hour, but that's because I was trying to juggle three cameras. I see no reason why a full grown adult couldn't finish this in under 30 minutes, probably under 20. It'll be slower if you're trying to help a child do it because you're trying to teach them while you're doing it, and slower still if the child's doing it themselves. Could a kid assemble this? That's gonna depend on the age of the kid their interest level, and their manual dexterity. And that's kind of where I have a problem with the kit. Any kid old enough to do this alone is very unlikely to be impressed by the finished project. Any kid young enough to need your help might not have their own Bluetooth device. Some parents don't want their kids walking around with a tablet when they're five years old. But ultimately, all of that's really a function of your kid. So spend some time thinking about your kid before you run out and buy one of these. My prediction is you'll get 30 minutes of quality time with your kid, and then this will sit on a shelf and collect dust until they move out of the house. If you have kids, you know what I mean. If your kid's a little bit older, I'm gonna recommend one of the kits in these videos right up here. The assembly process is a bit more involved, but when you're done, you'll have a real speaker. I'm Justin, this is the DIY Audio Guy YouTube channel, and I will see you on the next adventure.